What is up guys, in today's video we're going to be spectating random players in Fortnite Zero Build, but before we get into that, just a quick shout out to today's sponsor, and that is going to be The Coldest Water. They make insulated water bottles that are designed to keep your water cold for up to 36 hours, and then they also have, you know, the inverse of that, thermoses and such that are designed to keep your beverage warm for several hours. If you're interested, there will be a link down in the description below where you can check them out. And thank you to the coldest water for sponsoring today's video. In today's video, we're going to be spectating zero build trios. Normally, I stick to solos for this sort of thing, and there's a few reasons for that. But this week, I wanted to make a team game mode version because we just got the guardian shield being added. And I feel like that's an item that really affects the team game modes. We're going to fall to here just because there's a lot of oathbound chest spawns there. And the team that comes out of there is very likely to have the, uh, the shield. But... One of the main reasons why I like to stick to solos for this sort of thing is that you can't swap between players of the same team e easily, and I, I feel like that changes the game a lot. Also, I pretty much only play solos, and I'm not really sure how the matchmaking in this game works, but since I don't play the team game modes at all, I feel like it doesn't put me in as sweaty of matches for them. And then also, I, I feel like it's just simpler to focus on one person their individual decision making and their individual fighting because really not that much changes in the team game modes if you're good at fighting you're good at fighting and that's all that really matters um i think a lot of people struggle in the team game modes because they kind of like try to over complicate it and i don't know they, they, they people feel like there's much more like strategic depth to this game than there really is but at the end of the day if you hit your shots you hit your shots there's somebody in this house Ultimate's on the struggle. You got the DMR. We are on board with Noel Kilo. He still has the Oathbound chest up top. There is somebody in his house, but like I said, I can't quickly select, like, swap between their teammates. Uh, so I guess we will know if it's them or not, but... Yeah, he's just gonna loot this house. I'm not really sure what his teammates are doing. They, like, ran down the hill. Um, I believe there is somebody in his house that is not a part of his team. He ends up getting the Oathbound shield there, plus a Thunder Shotgun, plus a Big Pot, and Flashes is pretty good. See what he's gonna go with here. Personally, I would drop the uh, Maven for the DMR. Like, I feel like with these weapons here, he's the rigid. He took too long to heal and loot. That's one of the biggest struggles in this game, I feel like. And people have, like, kind of commented on these videos while wow, he gets saved. But people have commented on these videos and be like, you focus so much on the loot people have. And I do think that is, like, a decent part of the game is knowing which items you want to use, like, immediately. But when you're sitting there fumbling through the inventory and not really sure you're, like, individual ranking of the items and what you prefer to use then you just end up getting ran up on like that and it's especially true when you're like looting mid game on some people you just killed so immediately that player gets wiped from the game and we are now on board with default squad claims wiz and claims wizard and then their teammate fort skins has died so you're gonna try to reboot them i would imagine they're third partying this fight which is good i think but wiz here does not have a shotgun I feel like you just keep going there. Okay, never mind. I thought his teammate was going to push ahead, and I feel like you want to fight with your teammate for sure. That is, like, the biggest thing, I feel like, with the team game modes, is just whatever you're going to do, do it together. Like, if one person makes the wrong play, or the right play in a squad, and then the other three people just do the wrong thing, I feel like it's more likely to work out if just everybody commits to the bad play, you know? Just everybody being on the same page and everybody committing to the same plays, I think is almost more important than the plays themselves it's gonna be hard for him to win here there i was gonna say it's gonna be hard for him to win because he doesn't have a shotgun and he's low on hp he only had spray weapons and when you get into a fight with somebody with a spray weapon y'all are probably gonna trade damage you know like you saw this Ezio, he just one pumped him there and then there was no fight but if Ezio was also using a spray weapon he still would have won just because that player was so weak and that is like something to keep in mind when you're third partying a fight if you hear a bunch of people just like trading shots with ars and smgs especially smgs um, most likely the, all of the people from that are going to be weak. And right now there really hasn't been too much to take away from this game. I feel like it's just kind of all been like people getting third party and not really much you could do about that. Like it happens. This Gwen gets a kill and gets out. Indiana Jones is 150 HP roughly and he dies immediately. Like I said, it's just people getting collapsed on and third partied. Ends up knocking that Gwen, but the Gwen's teammates are going to be here to save her. She actually picked up the crown, too. That's funny. She, like, picked it up while she was knocked, so her teammates couldn't get it, but she got it. I'm not really sure what they're doing. i just throw her on the ground and revive her, please. Are they, like, trolling their teammate? And this is one of the reasons why I wouldn't play random squads. Are they trying to, like, extort her for the crown? 
I never really got into playing random duos or random squads, whatever, but I have some friends that have like streamed that content. And overwhelmingly, it seems like a lot of people just play that just to like, just to literally troll their teammates. Or you get those people not communicating at all. They're finally going to res this person, but their game is over because they took too long to res them and they're in a terrible position to start this fight. Yep. Once again, third party central. You need to get that revive immediately. I mean, I doubt those people cared that much about that situation. They're out there like trolling and spinning around with their teammates. <clears throat> but third parties are so prevalent in this game. As soon as a fight is done, you want to like get your guns reloaded, get healed, and then get ready to fight again because more often than not, like, people are going to be third-partying. Everybody knows how effective third-parties are in the game right now. And we ended up spectating True Totem. It just put us on somebody completely across the map. No Oathbound Shield in this player's inventory. I would like to spectate someone using the Oathbound Shield. Because I feel like it does have, like, a somewhat significant impact on team game modes. Not only can you use it as cover, um, but if somebody's holding it up, their teammates can shoot through it. Which is pretty insane, and I feel like it is... A really just overpowered way to get like an easy pick in a team game mode and then you know you can translate that into like more kills there was people over here at this brutal bastion area they're gonna know this team is here because they pulled up in a car and the team they're fighting has the high ground and this player at least that we're watching doesn't have any mobility so this fight really stinks for them teammate mantled up he's gonna go up the zip line he's probably gonna get shot here but this at least he's helping his teammate i appreciate that And it does not seem like this fight is going to go their way. They are not the most uh, competent fighter. And that's kind of like what I was talking about before. At the end of the day, <laughs> you got to be able to fight people in this video game. If you can't fight people, then it's going to be a struggle. I do somewhat agree with them pushing that there. So it, it probably looks like a really bad push because this team up here already had the high ground and they were camped up there. And it was really bad for the people pushing into it. But... They were really in a bad spot either way, because if they stay bottom, then the team high ground can just get shots on them. They can't leave easily because they don't have hammers. So I feel like if you are that team low ground, you kind of got to make a push. And it did start out well for them. They got damage on several of the members of this team. They just didn't get any picks. Like, I, I feel like if just the if the player we were spectating was a little more, like, present in that fight, uh, that bad situation was definitely playable, I think. You see, everybody on this team was really weak. But they were just kind of lost for a while. I feel like when they got up the stairs, they maybe could have like looked back towards the domino skin with like the right shoulder peak. Um, they maybe gotten shots that way, but they, they were just lost. I, kinda, I don't know. And that happens in the team game modes, especially if you have like people playing of like different mindsets. You know, it, that's why I was saying before, just being on the same page is so important. Because if you have two people that are aggressive and one guy that's just like really passive in the squad, that it's probably not gonna work out because the two are gonna push. Probably get some opening tags, but get knocked. And then, like, the passive player just, like, ends up getting cleaned up by the three. I think that is, like, for team game modes, the most important thing is just being on the same page as your teammate. And if, you, if you're struggling to get your teammates to listen to you, just play off them. The easiest way you can have good teamwork in this game, in any game, I think, is to just be the one that's flexible and to play off your teammates. Um, but a lot of people don't want to do that. They kind of just expect their teammates to play off them. And then when it doesn't work... They don't feel like they're to blame, but yeah, somebody has to like, you know, sacrifice in a way or don't not get their way. But if you're on the same page, I, I think it's way more likely to work out than everybody just kind of doing their own thing or having like different goals. It's like, this is questionable. It's not the biggest deal, but one padded, one stayed behind and one is in a car seemingly trying to drive. And if this player ends up getting into a fight, them just being of drastically different pacing could matter. Like, the player in the car is on the way here, but, you know, there was a few seconds where this player had no help. And then the, the third player still isn't here. And I feel like if you're this Dark Knight, all you have to do is wait a little bit to launch pad, and then y'all are just, your timing is so much better. There is people on them, I think. Oh, no, it was the NPC, I heard. There's people on the other side, though, uh, towards, like, the little dip, I think, where you can buy the shot shotgun from the NPC. I heard hammer. There's a player hammering into a bush right in front of him. They can just run this bush down. He actually came out of the bush. This is a free kill. If this player hits their shots. Oh, no. All right. So, this player definitely should die. No shot, they get away. 
So I think that is the worst possible play you could make if you're that, uh... I forget what the name of that skin is, but the one that was getting shot there... Fighting a full team literally just crouched and looked at them. And then he didn't die for it. Like, that's actually surprising. But, it, like, that player had no cover at all. And then just committed to the crouch spray. But he's not going to out DPS three people. They, they certainly get this kill, right? Okay, cool. Um, I don't know. Exotic Goat was the one that got ran over, I think, maybe? I'm not sure. Exotic Goat was the one that just sat there and crouch sprayed. Sometimes if you're out in the open and you get caught like that, if, especially if it's a 1v1, you can maybe just like crouch and out DPS them. But like, yeah, 1v3, that is not going to work out. They needed to get away from that immediately. And once again, as you saw, this team ended up picking that team apart just because they were all together. Like because the green skin was alone and then like the fish skin, they were separated. This team got two 1v3s. And they just get picked apart. Same here. This guy gets picked apart and not all, like just getting a pick makes it so much easier to win the fight. You know, it doesn't always have to be when one team like when when a team is incredibly split. But like if you and your team are fighting a trio straight up, try to like focus down one player just to give yourself a numbers advantage. You put pressure on the other team to like maybe revive the guy. Their firepower is limited and just like getting that first pick makes it so easy to translate the fight into a victory. Especially with some like the shockwave hammer in the game. It's very easy to put pressure on people. I think the squad is decent. Like, they're not, they're certainly not the best, like, players I've ever seen. But just driving around in the car like this, just being on the same page just sets you out so far ahead of a lot of, of a lot of the people in the lobby. And so far they've done that. There was a, like, brief kind of instance where it wasn't going well when they padded and drove to the area separately. I'm not sure what's going on. They're trying to shoot down this drop, but there's another team going for it. And I feel like you always want to focus the players more than loot. The player to the right with a crown. I just heard it activate. Every zone, like a crown activates. And you can use that as like an audio cue for people around you sometimes. This should be a kill. There's a player in the house that they were just on top of, I think. And I would imagine this is another team wipe. Maybe not. This guy needs to take it behind cover. I'm surprised that worked out. The red eye is not better than the scar at that range. If you're this guy, I feel like you just want to immediately get to this rock and then uh, maybe get some shots on them. But just taking the fight out in the open like that versus the scar is not a good deal. And it's like, it's, it wasn't hard for him to get to that rock, you know. It's just a very small thing. But just like knowing to immediately get to the cover would have saved this team a lot of time and heals. But as you saw in that fight, once again, they were on the same page. The team they were fighting wasn't. They got a pick. And it's a free team wipe. Things are getting kind of scuffed here, though. This is a really messy fight. And... Yeah. I'm not sure where one of these players are. There's one of these teammates that is just missing. The I think it's a domino? I, I don't know where they went. But this... Yeah. One of the players just left, and then it was a 2v3 in this castle, and then it's over. And once again, like I said, getting behind the rock, you might be like, whatever, he got the kill anyways. But if this Red Knight or Dark Knight got behind that rock instead of taking that fight versus those players, they would have taken less damage in that fight and they would have been ready to deal with this team sooner. But because they were all weak and scuffed after that fight, this team just picked them apart once again. And it was another situation where the team that was together won the fight and the team that was just on like totally different pages. Uh... Lost. This Y Quan guy is using the. What's it called? The shield. I want to spectate them. But like I said earlier at the start of the video, this is why I don't necessarily like do, like spectating team game modes because it's like not easy to switch through people's teammates. Like I feel like if you think if you're spectating somebody, it should be easy to swap between their team. But let's spectate this player since they're using the oathbound shield. They're not carrying any heals at all. This team is like spot checking bushes. I think they just got landed on or something. I don't know. Someone was gliding. Maybe it was one of them. They got so many heals here. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, yeah, there is another player. Oh, no, it's their NPC. Or an NPC. I'm so confused right now. What does this AI doing? He's lost his mind. 
I, I want to see this player fight with the shield, and I want to see if they kind of do what I was talking about before, where, like, someone can hold it up, and, like, they shoot through it. We will see, though. Someone just hammered, and I don't think it was either of them. This guy's going to launch pad up. He's being really aggro. So this might end up working, but they're going to be pretty split. I thought he was just going to launch pad for, like, the information. Okay, he, this is good, though. See, this is what I was talking about before. He padded. He was very, like, not with his teammates, and then he just kind of waited to do anything until they got here. Um, see, I don't really like this play. They might not know that you can shoot through it, but hypothetically, if that golf skin didn't throw theirs down, they could hold it out, and then this player we're spectating could just shoot through it. Or this player that we're spectating could hold theirs out, and his teammates could shoot through it. And that would allow them to get early damage on these people. I don't really think they would get the kills off of it, though. Um, it's very easy for this team on the hill to just not die to this team. This is a really bad fight. I feel like if you're them, you just want to get out of this. This isn't really going to go anywhere, and you're just opening yourself up to getting third-partied by a different team. And there is another team of two somewhere. But for some reason, this team is running down the hill. Maybe they're not in zone. It's kind of hard to tell zone sometimes on spectating. This Gwen should be a knock. Oh, he has to reload. That Gwen is really weak, though. They can do something with that. If they kind of get some tags on this guy to neutralize him, I feel like they could focus the Gwen. Teammates are dipping, though. Trying to get to his teammate's shield. As soon as they get a pick, I think they win this fight. This team that I feel like this team that we're spectating is the more solid team they I, I feel like they probably win this game they're not using the shields like in the way that i personally would like but i feel like some people don't know that you can shoot through it if your teammate's holding it that's such a big deal and like not only do some people not know it so they don't employ it but a lot of people don't expect to be playing against that so they kind of over peak when they're like just looking at people using the shield because they don't expect to get shot through it uh it's really really busted they end up getting a pick anyway so now it's a 3v2v2 essentially they don't have their pick knocked. This guy's getting greased by the tree hitbox. I feel like you thirst that knock there. The guy's crawling up. Thirst him, please. I don't know why people don't thirst as much. Maybe he's trying to bait it, but I feel like if, if you thirst that knock, your team is just in a, such a better spot because then you're only... You have a numbers advantage on every remaining team automatically. And it, it's unlikely this team gets the res, but it it's not like he did anything with this time anyways, you know? I'm not really sure what's going on. Whenever you have an opportunity to thirst somebody, I feel like you just take it, get them out of the game. It's like, people, like, don't like it for some reason. But, like, I don't know. I never understood it. Like, people complaining about getting thirsted. Like, someone killed you and then they eliminated you. Like, obviously. And this guy might have res that knock. Because that's where the knock was. And it might not end up mattering. But, like, imagine a world where, like, it, he, that guy did res the person. And then he was, like, hammering on the two people and, like, got picked there. It's just... Oh, yeah, they did res him. This game would be over right now if they thirsted that guy earlier. And it ends up not mattering. But it's just, like, why not thirst the person there? This person didn't do anything else with that time. Um, they could have easily thirsted the knock. And then, like I said, they just would have had an automatic numbers advantage on any of the other remaining teams. But that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys found it helpful and informative. If you did, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you like to see more, comment down below what you thought of this video. Like I said, I don't like spectating team game modes as much because I feel like it doesn't put me in the most uh, competitive matches. And then also there's just a lot that goes on in the team game modes that I would kind of like to be able to swap between people and talk about, but you can't really get it done. But yeah, I just feel like the biggest thing is knowing how to fight and being on the same page as your teammates. And if you do that, you're probably going to win because a lot of people just kind of fold under the chaos. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.